Good afternoon, everybody. So if you were not on a few minutes ago, my name is Marie. I am with Jackrabbit support team. So if you normally send quick chats or tickets, I would be one of those people answering those. And for today's webinar, I am joined by Talina Babb. Talina is with our Jackrabbit education team. So all of those awesome videos that you normally would see, that is the voice behind those. Good afternoon, Talina. Good afternoon, Marie and everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So today's webinar, Talina will be going over our onboarding new employees with the Jackrabbit training system. So this is a new rollout that happened late last fall, I believe was when it came out. So I think all of you, if you have not used it yet, you will find it really beneficial. And especially even right now, something that you can, if you still have staff that are looking for things to do, you can have them brush up on their Jackrabbit skills. Today's meeting is being recorded. So as well, if you need to later on, you can always share that email with other users of your database. As well, uh, when everybody entered, you were put in a listen-only mode. So if you do need to ask questions throughout, if you just hover at the bottom of your screen, you will see the Q&A interface. So you can just ask questions there, and we will go over those towards the end. And then just a few other little housekeeping items. We wanted to go over with you the rest of our trainings that we have lined up so far for 2020. So with everything that is happening now, uh, our trainings going forward for this year will be, as far as we know right now, will be virtual. So first one coming up is our Jack Rob Essentials. This is the normal two-day training. It was previously called the basics training. Our first one is taking place coming up in May, on May 11th and 12th, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern each day. And then after that, we have our Jack Rabbit Level Up. This will be a one-day training on May 21st from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. And then as well, normally in the spring and in the fall, we would have our Boost User Conference. We would have the East Coast Conference in spring, West Coast Conference in the fall. This year, we are having one conference in the fall, but it will be virtual. So no matter where you are, you will be able to attend. Nobody's going to have to worry about hopping on a flight or hotels, and that will be coming on November 16th and 17th. And as soon as we have more information about that, we will send that out to you. And as well, all of our information for all of our classroom trainings or virtual classroom trainings now can be found at jackrabbitclass.com forward slash support forward slash classroom trainings. And as well, to keep everybody connected, you can always check out our Help Center. And especially right now, as soon as you come into the Help Center, you will see at the very top, we do have a COVID-19 resources. So these are all little tips and tricks to help you with applying credits, taking advantage of our new resources fields. So everything is right there for you. And as well, uh, if you are not already on, I encourage everybody to join our Facebook users group. So for the Jackrabbit software users group, or if you are care specific, you can check out the Jackrabbit care users Facebook group. And as well, we are always posting and keeping everybody up to date with what's going on on our Instagram and Twitter. All of our videos that are done by Talina, our webinars, and you can find those always on YouTube. And as well, don't forget those little intercom messages that always pop up in your little bottom right hand. They give you a wealth of different information of what's happening and new things that are on the horizon. And that is it. I will turn it over to Talina. Enjoy your webinar, everybody. Thank you, Marie. Uh, again, my name is Talina Bath, and I'm on the education team here at Jackrabbit. Um, if you're just joining us, uh, today we'll be discussing onboarding your employees with the Jackrabbit training system. Uh, here's our agenda for today. 
Uh, now, with the current COVID-19 situation, you are probably not hiring any staff at the moment. However, I would still like to cover some things you should consider when hiring a new employee. Uh, so when the time comes that we get back to something close to normal, and hopefully that will be sooner rather than later, you'll be ready to get any new employees up to speed quickly. Um, I have some tips I can share with you when training new employees, and then I'll be showing you the Jackrabbit training system, which can help new employees get up to speed using Jackrabbit, or also even existing employees and who could boost their knowledge of Jackrabbit. And this is a great time to do that, uh, to keep uh, your staff uh, with something uh, that you can do during this time. So I'll give you a tour of the Jackrabbit training system and then we'll finish with any questions that you have. Again, please feel free to enter your questions during the presentation uh, using the Q&A icon in your Zoom controls. So you've hired a new employee. Now what? Um, well, you should begin with the end in mind. This is a quote from Stephen Covey's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It means to start with a clear understanding of your destination to know where you're going so you better understand where you are now so that the steps you take are always in the right direction. So you're gonna start with a new employee and you want to end with an employee who is performing well, fits in with your culture and their fellow coworkers, an employee who is helping your business be successful. Now, how will you get there? So let's talk about the differences between orientation and onboarding. Orientation can be boiled down to a checklist of things to cover. It's the big picture. All the things anyone needs to do or know to work for the company. It gets the employee ready for training. It's the here's where you work, the paperwork we need to pay you, uh, etc. Onboarding is more of a strategic plan. It's a plan to learn the culture, the responsibilities of their new role, such as how to properly complete key tasks, who to go to with questions, how to get approval, etc. It's a process of building engagement from the first contact until the employee becomes established within the company. So here's another example of the difference. During orientation, you would explain the company's overall commitment to customer service. During onboarding, you might explain the unspoken rules, such as how the phone gets answered by the second ring. Okay, so how do you create a successful onboarding experience? You need to prepare before their first day. Decide what you want to accomplish. What impression do you want new hires to walk away with at the end of their first day? Think about how long your onboarding will last. A week? Two weeks? A month? Set up a schedule and share it with your new employee. You can include interactive sessions. Uh, your new employee will benefit from some hands-on tasks. You can improve connections. You can allow time to engage in small talk with colleagues. Arrange informal social interactions such as lunches with other employees, etc. You or their manager can send a welcome email and onboarding schedule before the employee's first day of work so they know what to expect. Where do they go on their first day? Who to ask for when they arrive? What to wear? I think we all remember those uh, scary questions we all have, those nerves we have on our first day uh, working at a new job. Have payroll paperwork ready for them to complete, or even send it to them in the welcome email to complete in advance. Set up their workstation, their email, their network password, etc. And by taking care of these things early, you give your new employee a positive and lasting impression of your company. They will feel valued and welcomed. Your onboarding plan should include the four C's. Compliance. That teaches employees the basic legal and policy related rules and regulations. This is your harassment policy, your equal employment opportunity laws, etc. Clarification ensures that employees understand their new job and all related expectations. And I bet you are probably covering compliance and clarification in your onboarding of new employees already. But consider stepping it up to include culture which provides employees with a sense of the formal and informal organizational norms. Consider defining your company's core values and share them with your employees. 
One of Jackrabbit's core values is we look for the win-win. Our employees work together to explore and exhaust our resources to develop solutions. And how about connection? This refers to the vital interpersonal relationships and information networks that new employees must establish. Allow time in the onboarding schedule for the new employee to engage in small talk with coworkers. This can be easily started with lunches or coffee breaks, etc. Including your company's culture and adding activities to improve your new employee's connections as part of the onboarding a new employee, this can really step up their onboarding experience and get them established as part of your organization sooner. So now a couple tips for training new employees. First, remember to start slow and be flexible. Your new employee is a little nervous, wants to impress you, and is excited all at the same time. They are suffering from information overload, remembering names, faces, the facility, and that's just to start. You can also help them by providing electronic documents for them to review. This allows them to access it and review it anywhere and anytime they have a question. Maybe you have an employee handbook that you can make available online. As for Jackrabbit, you could point them to the Jackrabbit Help Center as well as the training system. Remember to check in more often than you think you should. You may be surprised by this, but you should check in at least once a day, at least during their first week. Designate a buddy and involve peers. Your new employee may be more comfortable asking questions to their coworker versus their manager. A buddy will also help them establish connections. That's those relationships with their coworkers. Give new hires a task. Many people learn better by doing rather than by listening or taking notes. And lastly, gather their feedback. After a week or two or at the end of the onboarding process, ask them about the training process. Was it too much? Too fast? Was there something they'd like to have learned but didn't? It's a great way to improve your onboarding experience for the next time that you hire staff. So there are lots of great benefits of onboarding. Uh, higher job satisfaction, because by improving employee engagement and jump-starting relationships with coworkers, you're gonna get higher performance levels. Employees are more efficient because expectations and objectives are clear. And you'll have lower employee turnover and related costs. That's a huge win-win for your new employees and for your business. So you can use the Jackrabbit training system, which is what we're all waiting to, to hear about, right? Um, this can help with one of your four C's, clarification. The training system will guide staff through a series of lessons, and this is to build their knowledge and their confidence to complete tasks in Jackrabbit. We've organized it by user roles. Jackrabbit Basics is for everyone who is a user of the Jackrabbit application. Uh, coaches slash instructors and staff is for anyone who uses the staff portal, and that includes those who only need it to enter their time worked. The front desk staff is just what it sounds like. It's for users who typically perform front desk ta uh, type tasks. Supervisors and managers are those who perform more advanced tasks. So you are probably asking, how do you access the training system? Well, as you can see here on your screen, there is a link you can use, um, but let me switch over here to the Jackrabbit application and we'll show you how another way you can get into the training system. We're going to do that by going to the question mark icon on the blue menu bar in Jackrabbit. Huh, and of course, my session is timed out. Uh, and when we do that, we're going to click on this uh, icon right here, the staff training options. And here it goes through a couple of training options available and you can scroll down to the bottom. We have several other training options, but the first one here is learn Jackrabbit using the Jackrabbit training system. And it gives you kind of a, a background information on the training system, but you can access it quickly by clicking on the green training system button. Uh, we also have down here below some uh, supervisor instructions that you can refer to. And I'm gonna cover that in just a little bit uh, after we go through the training system. So let's go ahead and click on the green button. Here we are live in our Jackrabbit training system. 
And again, you can access it from the Jackrabbit application like I just showed you. You can also grab the link by copying it right here from the, your uh, browser uh, address bar uh, in your browser and maybe sending that to your staff in an email, for example. Let's start off with uh, going into the Jackrabbit basics. We're going to click on that. You'll notice here that we have uh, instructions. These are instructions that you can have your staff who are being trained read through. It's going to cover a lot about what I'm going to be talking to you about today, so I won't read through it. Next, you'll see a couple lessons. Number one is the basics. Again, this is for uh, anybody who is going to be using your Jackrabbit database application. When we open that up, you'll see there are lots of topics listed out here. Your trainees can simply click on these uh, articles and expand out the article. Many of them have videos for your visual learners. They can also scroll through the article itself. Uh, they can minimize that or collapse it, if you will, and then proceed on to the next. Or they can simply scroll down, read through the article, and then expand the next and proceed again. Um, so next, I have a couple things in lessons that I want to point out to you. So let's go to the next uh, area to show you those. I'm going to go into the front desk staff. Again, we have the instructions uh, available for staff uh, who are being trained to go through. And there are lots of lessons here available. These are all, again, tasks that are typically performed by front desk staff. Yours may be different, um, and that's fine. You can just instruct your staff on which lessons they should complete. We're going to go into lesson number three, enroll or register students into classes. I want to show you a few things that uh, are in many of the lessons, and this one is a, a good example for you. Uh, this lesson, uh, as many do, but not all, include what's called review. This is optional, of course. Uh, when uh, your trainees click on this, there are several articles that they can click on, and they're going to open up in a new window. So if you clicked on that, it would open up to a, window, a new window, and they can review it and then close it down to go back to the training system again. And again, that is just optional if they did not cover those topics previously or they want to review them again. Uh, in addition, of course, we have all the articles they can read through, but one of the features that we have that I'm showing you in this lesson and, and many of the lessons have is something called practice. That is this particular article right here. And what we've uh, added to the training system is the ability for your trainees to practice using what they've learned in a training database that so it's not your database but they can go into a practice database we provide the jackrabbit login url right here you they can choose the edition of jackrabbit that you have uh, enter that in as the user id for example lms dance and then enter in the password of training one now these training databases are um, they have some basic information already in there and with classes and families and students, etc. And so your trainees can utilize that or they can, in this example, they can take the students and enroll them uh, for the practice. And this, they give you a little bit of a, a little exercise or um, a scenario that they can go through or you can provide your own to your trainees. And each of these practice articles kind of gives you a brief summary of how they could do that. And so for this example, you can enroll students in multiple ways, and it just kind of gives a quick summary of what they may have just learned in the lesson. And again, this is all optional. They do not need to do that. But it's just a great opportunity to, for the, your trainees to practice without um, changing any data in your database. In addition, many of the quizzes, uh, most of the quizzes actually have uh, lessons have quizzes and here for example is the quiz for lesson number three uh, after they reviewed the topics in the lesson they can click on the green take the quiz button it tells them how many questions are in the quiz how many points they could earn and how many points they need to uh, earn in order to get an A a B or a C if you will we're all familiar with those grading uh, terms so I'm going to click on take the quiz just to show you what that's all about and again, quizzes are optional. Uh, the first thing that they're going to be asked is to enter in an email address. 
This can be the supervisor's email, uh, but doesn't need to be. Uh, we suggest the supervisor's email so because um, when they are done taking the quiz, they're going to get the results of their quiz, but then the person who, uh, is, whose email address this is, is also going to get the results of their quiz. So typically we like to see the supervisor's email entered here. Quizzes can be retaken as many times as the trainee needs, so, and they can use the same email address each time. Um, I'm going to switch over to a quiz that I've actually already completed. You can see here there are typical true-false questions, there's some multiple choice kind of questions, etc. And this is what your trainee would see after they finish uh, a quiz. They can, they're going to receive this uh, submit button, and as soon as they submit the quiz, um, well, we have to answer a little uh, verification here. Let's do that real quick. And they're going to get this. Your response has been recorded, and they can click on a view score button. When I do that, they can go through and see that they got the first question correct. Here's the feedback for it, etc. This question is incorrect, noted by the red text and the red X. It tells me what the correct answer was, and again, it gives me some feedback. And they can click on this link to open up the article that refers to or explains uh, what was covered in this question. So some great feedback there. And the going back to it again, the email that, pardon me, is entered here on the first uh, bit is also going to receive this email and is going to see a view score button. Um, and that's also illustrated. And that will give that when you, when in the email, when they click that view score, you will see something very similar to this uh, in the email. So that's very cool. All right, so that covers quizzes. After they finish the quiz, uh, some of the articles you may notice have what's called optional topics. So optional topics are just that. They may or may not apply. They're related to the lesson itself. So it's related to enrolling and registering students, but they're optional. And by what that, for this example, what I mean is you'll notice that some of these are trial enrollments. So we have future enrollments, we have wait lists, topics. And again, maybe your organization does not offer trial enrollments. And so therefore your trainee can skip those. And so they're optional topics. Uh, the same applies for optional topics. We also have a quiz that is specifically for the optional topics only. And so that's a different set of quiz uh, that they can take to um, go through that information. When they're done with the lesson, there's a link at the bottom that they can return to the menu. Um, and they can also scroll to the top using this button. And then of course, using the breadcrumbs up at the top can take them back to wherever they need to go. So there's lots of ways they can navigate around. It should be fairly simple for them. All right. Um, one of the things I meant to cover, let me go back in here real quick. So we have lots of lessons in the front desk staff. And you, I talked about how we have little practice uh, lessons within some of the lessons where they can go in and actually do a little exercise. We have some of those all up for the front desk staff in this one particular article, practice what you've learned. Again, enrolling a student, that kind of scenario is here uh, as well. All these typical front desk staff uh, little exercises. And your trainees can click on them, uh, go through the example of say adding a fake uh, family to the database. It kind of gives them a summary again of how to do that, you know, how to enroll a student. So here's actually a family or a student in the train uh, practice databases. And this again is the summary on how to do that. So that's all kind of summarized here as well. So they can do that at the end of the whole uh, going after going through all the lessons that they wish. We also offer the where to go with questions. We felt that was very helpful for trainees again to just a little reminder that there are other places they can go for questions, and that is by selecting the question mark icon on the menu bar. They'll see this screen, as you're probably all familiar with. And we down here we give kind of a brief uh, explanation of what all of the items uh, on this screen uh, mean, you know, so it just kind of goes over how they can find help. And of course, if they have any questions or you have any questions going forward you, about the training system, you can contact us at education at jackrabbittech.com. All right, next I want to go over to um, coaches and instructors and staff. 
And this again is uh, strictly for staff who will be using the staff portal. And this includes your staff who will be entering in their time. And you can do that by, so you can see there's several articles in here. And if here's the one on entering time, let me just click into that real quick. So if you'd like your staff to go, trainees to go through this, you might want to indicate to them which time entry method they'll be using. And say, for example, they will be entering their time using the clock in slash out method. They can click on that article, read all about it, uh, collapse it down, and they would be skipping the other two uh, time entry method articles. And then they could proceed on to the rest of the lesson, including the quiz if they wished. So I just wanted to go over that real quick with you. Uh, the supervisors and managers role is very similar to the front desk staff role. You see here it also has instructions and it also has a lot of lessons uh, regarding that. These are more advanced type tasks. We do a deep dive into the executive dashboard. It's all about managing users, managing uh, the staff portal, etc. If you use the time clock, uh, if you're a manager for using the time clock, you would, how do you go about that and, pr and preparing for processing of payroll, et cetera, how to post tuition. These are all some great tasks for supervisors and managers that they can learn about in the supervisors and managers role. We also have practice scenarios in these lessons as well. They're also summed up here in this particular article that kind of groups them all together in one place. Just some, you know, great little tasks about how to send an email. You can practice sending an email for a weather closing, for example. And then it tells you basically in some quick steps how to do that. Uh, again, we have the where to go with questions. And you may have noticed also on the front desk role, we have something uh, for front desk role and for supervisors and managers called certification. And that's a way for your staff to get certified on using Jackrabbit. You can get a front desk staff certification and you can get a supervisors and managers certification. Um, these are just a subset of some of the questions that are asked uh, in the quizzes for all the lessons. So if you've gone through all the quizzes and you feel comfortable with that, you can come in here and take the certification quiz. Uh, the supervisors and managers one has 50 questions. I think the front desk one has 30 questions. And again, if you have a passing grade of C or better, you receive a certificate. And let me just uh, hop over to uh, back over to our presentation. I want to show you something real quick. And that is, this is what the certificate actually looks like. And I think it looks pretty awesome. Um, I would love to hang this on my wall, I know. And uh, I think it's just beautiful. So again, you just need a passing grade to earn that. And when someone uh, attempts the certification quiz and they pass, uh, education staff reviews that uh, score submission and then sends a separate email, usually uh, sometimes the same day, but typically within a, a couple of days, uh, you'll, they'll receive an email at the address that email address that was entered on the quiz uh, along with your certificate attached. So that's very, very cool. So again, um, Next up is, so here's some instructions for the supervisors. This is for you or your supervisor to do to you know, how do you talk to your staff about this? So the first step is to determine the lessons that you would like to have staff to review. And for example, this might be lessons in the Jackrabbit Basics role um, and maybe lessons one through five in the front desk user role. You may give your trainee additional exercises or scenarios, maybe with specific data, for examples, that you want them to practice in the training database. Uh, maybe you want them to uh, add a particular class or post a fee, uh, you know, uh, post a store sale, for example, that type of thing. And you can provide those examples or you can simply have those use the examples that, are, that we provide in the training system. You can let staff know how to access uh, either through the Jackrabbit application or with the link uh, that you can grab again from the uh, browser address bar. You can provide the email address the trainee should enter in the quizzes to receive the quiz results. And again, this is typically the supervisors, but it does not have to be. And they can use the same email address over and over again. We sometimes see that people feel that they can't use the same address, but they can. And these instructions are also in the Help Center. And let me show you where one more time. Um, I'm gonna 
hop back over here to the Jackrabbit application. And again, you're going to go to the question mark icon, staff training options icon. And then here again is how you access the training system going in this particular method or you can, and here's the supervisor instructions that I was talking about. That's simply what I just discussed uh, as far as determine the lessons your training needs. But one thing I want to point out here is we also offer, and if you click here, it's kind of a checklist and it opens up in uh, Google Sheets and you can download this or print it. Um, this is not able for you to edit because, of course, this is available for everybody. Um, but if you download it or print it, then you can come in and uh, say you have a new staff, put their name here, enter their position if you'd like. Um, again, the link is provided here for them for, to access. Um, they may need to type it, of course. And then you could come in here and check off. I would like you to review the basics lessons. I would like you to review lessons, you know, one through five, uh, including the optional one, for example. And then your new trainee can come in and check them off as completed when they do finish them and then enter their quiz score if, uh, if they would like. Um, and then again, you can hand that over to your, uh, to the, they can hand that back into you as the supervisor. And if you look down here back on the supervisor instructions, we've included an overview of all of the quizzes along with all of how many points and uh, questions, et cetera, there are. So you can kind of do a comparison like, oh, they got a, a seven on the, on the first ad families. So that's a B and they, uh, you know, they got a four on the uh, enrolling or registering, so maybe they need to go back through that again. So it kind of gives you some feedback that you can give back to them again as well. Uh, again, remember that this training system can be used not just for new trainees and new staff, but it can also be used for your existing staff or even yourself uh, to learn new features in Jackrabbit and to kind of bone up on all the uh, things that you need to be aware of to uh, use Jackrabbit. So that completes our presentation for today. Um, Marie, do we have any questions that have come in? Um, I'm also looking at questions and I don't see them any at this point in time. I'll give you just a few minutes to enter them in uh, using your Q&A icon. Uh, that you see there in your Zoom controls, which may be, by the way, at the top or the bottom of your screen, um, depending upon um, your uh, setup and which browser you're using. I'll give you guys just a few minutes to enter those questions in. Um, I have someone who's responded. This looks great. It would be great if you would change your email to just email. Ah, that's some great feedback. Thank you. Speaking of which, I do want to show you something. Let me switch back over here to the training system. Um, in addition to uh, our lessons in here, for example, I'll just go to any lesson for the quiz down here at the bottom. We do allow on every single lesson, anyone who would like to provide feedback for the lesson, they're able to do that here by entering in. Um, it's actually like a little quiz survey thing again. And so that's on any lesson and anybody can do that. Your trainees, you yourself, etc. So I appreciate that. Uh, any feedback we can to make our training system better. Uh, let's see, Rebecca asks, if you give your staff the training link, link can Will they have access to all? Yes, uh, if you give them the training link, they're gonna have access to uh, every single area here in the training system. Um, again, this is kind of like going to the help center, right? So like if you have a user ID, they have access to everything in the help center as well. So uh, for example, say you have a front desk staff who really kind of wants to get that promotion um, and wants to become your, you know, your finance manager, for example, they can come in here to the supervisors and managers role and go through the areas in there and kind of learn how to, to, to do the finance era, uh, section of that. So yes, they have access to everything here in the training system. So great question. Thank you for that. Uh, Emily says, thank you very much for the presentation. Very helpful. I am so glad to hear that. I hope that you guys can find some uh, benefit to using the training system and getting your staff uh, quickly up to speed on Jackrabbit or just, you know, enhancing the knowledge that your current staff has. Um, that was our goal. We're here to help you. And if there's ever anything that we can do to improve the training system again, please feel free to send us in some feedback. 
Uh, Rebecca asks, just as training, it does not give access to the database. Ah, very good question. Yes, I, I understand your point now. So if you give staff just this link up here that's in the browser window uh, here or also in the supervisor's instructions, again, it's also listed here. If you give them just that, no, they cannot go into your database whatsoever. There is absolutely no way to get back into your application. They only have access to this training system. So that's a great question. Thank you for that. All righty. I think that is all the questions that we have for today. Um, I see another comment has come in from Stephanie. Thank you. This was very helpful, and I am here and happy to help. Um, so I think that wraps up our presentation for today. Marie, do you have anything that you'd like to add? Uh, no, that is it. We just have some more thank yous that came in as well on the uh, chat portion. And... Oh, I see one more. Somebody just, oh, somebody just asked the same question again. Do they need an account on Jackrab to do the training? No, they do not. And no, actually, not at all. So if you haven't even set up your staff at all with anything whatsoever, uh, they are sitting at home, you know, practicing uh, shelter in place, uh, for example, um, you can give them this URL. They do not need to be a user in the staff portal. They do not need to be a user in the Jackrabbit application. No login credentials whatsoever is needed. So you can have them get started at any point in time. Um, send them that welcome email. Here's your onboarding schedule. I'd like you to, you know, start going through the training system and et cetera. So, uh, and then once that gets rolling, then you can provide uh, login credentials, et cetera, later on. So, all right. And we did have one more come in from Rebecca. She was just asking if they are already staffed, can you get them to training? Yes, absolutely. So again, if they have either a staff portal login, um, that's a separate total uh, login credential. Again, same thing with Jackrabbit and with the staff portal. Those are all separate. All right, hopefully that answers your question. And that looks like it is it. Just all some right. more thank yous. I love it, which Yay. is what we love to hear. I love to hear that. So thank awesome. you so much. All right. So that's a wrap for today, everybody. So just a reminder as well, you will receive a recording of this. So if you want to share this webinar with your staff uh, when you're getting ready to onboard them, you can do that as well. Have a great day, everybody. Oh, yes. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.